What's up guys, and welcome to another Fallout 4 video on the School Zone. People love the Craziest Creatures video that I posted a few weeks ago, and in that video I mentioned I'd do an expanded walkthrough of the Red Death quest, because it was one of the most interesting DLC quests that I've completed so far. So, as promised, that's what I have for you today. It'll also be a trivia walkthrough, because there are some really interesting aspects to the Mariner's Tale that I think are worthy of, uh, shall we say, educational exploration. The Mariner in Far Harbor calls herself the town's shipwright, which is basically a specialist in building and repairing boats. Since the town of Far Harbor itself is almost treated like her warship on land, she also builds up the town's defenses, which she calls the hull. In fact, she used to own the docks of Far Harbor until the deadly fog rolled in and kind of forced the Far Harbor residents to make the dock area itself their own. She's been a bit disgruntled by that since they don't seem to help her much, but you can help. <laughs> She has a series of quests called Hull Breach that you can complete for her. After you complete Hull Breach 1, she'll use the tools you found to build these Cheval de Freeze barriers around Far Harbor. I actually talked about what those are in my Vim Pop Factory episode. Links to that episode down below in the iCard above if you want to learn more about that. After you complete Hull Breach 2, she'll use the metal hull parts from the salvage freighter to further build up the docks. And I'll go ahead and show you Hull Breach 3 here in this episode. It's pretty quick to do and we'll get to get in some gunplay in this episode since the Red Death isn't exactly going to be what you expect if you don't know the punchline yet. And you'll need to complete all the Hull Breach quests in order to start her final great hunt quest for the Red Death. Now being the school zone and all, I like to give you guys some cool factoids when I can, and I've kind of gotten to know the way Bethesda developers think after these last couple of years of schooling several Bethesda games. So what I'll do now is give you some of my opinions about what I think is being referenced with the Mariner, Far Harbor, and the Red Death as it relates to real life, and various literary references. But these are just my own educated guesses here, and they're not officially confirmed. So you can take that for what it's worth. But hey, nothing wrong with a little uh, intellectual exercise, right? So I believe the name Mariner in this case is most likely a reference to the poem Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by the famous British poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, in a way, is a poem about a spiritual journey overcoming a hardship, which I'll get more into in a moment as it relates to the Mariner. Coleridge was also friends with the famous poet Wordsworth, which I also think is possibly the inspiration for Codsworth. I mean, other Fallout 4 characters are named after poets, one of them right in Far Harbor named Longfellow. Plus, Coleridge was also the real-life inspiration for the Transcendental Poets of Boston, to which there are many references throughout the Commonwealth, one of them an actual street plaque I showed you guys in my Freedom Trail episode. So in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and by the way, rhyme isn't misspelled in the title, rhyme spelled R-I-M-E is the frost that forms when fog freezes. Ah, and isn't the fog almost like a character itself in Far Harbor? Now, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is a poem about a sailor and his crew navigating their ship through some strange paranormal experiences. If you're still in school and this poem comes up in your lit class, you should give it a chance. It may seem hard to read at first, but it's got cool references to like crossbows, zombies, slime creatures, and other good fodder you often see in video games. And what does Far Harbor have a lot of? Ghouls, Mirelurks, and fog. In fact, in one of the Mariner's dialogue options where she considers kicking the Far Harbor folks off her docks and back into the fog, she says, surely their spirits would haunt me to my grave, and that's a fact. Now that's a direct reference to a scene in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And I did run into some blocks in the General Atomics factory that I showed you guys in a past episode that spelled out Xanadu, which is a reference to another Coleridge poem called Kubla Khan. But again, trying to keep it all brief here. Now the Mariner in Far Harbor has a secret she's been keeping from the town folk. She has an incurable disease, and that's one of the reasons she wants to get all this work done in the town in haste, so she can basically pass on knowing that she did her best to keep the people safe, thinking of them like her ship's crew in a way. Are you in any pain? Doc's given me something to treat most of the symptoms. Having a hard time keeping everything down, though. My energy level's not quite what it used to be, and it's only gonna get worse. But the secret she carries is also a burden. You may have heard the expression about carrying around a burden being like an albatross around your neck. Well, that expression comes from Coleridge's poem, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I don't believe we ever find out what her terminal illness is exactly, but she wants to confide in the sole survivor. In the poem, the Mariner meets a hermit, a hero like the sole survivor, who he wants to confide in about his story. Oh, and there's mention of blood red lights and how the sky has a fiery red color. And there's also references to crimson lights that appear at night, all of which we'll see when we meet the Red Death. 
Now I could go on making comparisons there, but I want to leave room for another poem that may be referenced here, and it's a poem by Edgar Allan Poe called Mask of the Red Death. Another lit class fave, so you've probably heard of it. I mean, many of you probably already know about another reference to an Edgar Allan Poe poem in the castle with General McGann and the bottles of the Amontillado wine. And Poe was actually inspired to write his cask of Amontillado story by visiting the real-life castle in Boston known as Fort Independence. I actually talked a little bit about Fort Independence in another episode that I'll put an iCard above and a link down below for if you want to check that out. But anyway, not to get too off topic, it's my guess here that the Red Death Quest is probably a reference to Poe's Mask of the Red Death. And not just a name either, there may be a bit more to it. Interestingly enough, the poem takes place during a plague, not unlike the radiation sickness that turns Fallout inhabitants into ghouls. It's also about a masquerade where nothing is as it seems to be, just like we'll discover later with the Red Death near Far Harbor. Not what it was thought to be. Now, I totally realize I may be grasping at straws here, but check this out. The main character in Mask of the Red Death, Prospero, is named after the character in the Shakespeare play, The Tempest, which interestingly enough is about ships getting wrecked or marooned on an island. Could just be a coincidence, or maybe not. Here's why it might not be. What I think the Fallout writers were going for here with the Mariner's questline was sort of a mashup of many different literary references, all having to do with the Mariner's inner challenges in her last great hunt, which, last but not least, may also be a reference to Moby Dick. In Melville's famous book, the ship's captain is obsessed with one great last hunt for Moby Dick. In his case, a whale that has caused all kinds of damage and terrorized his crew. I think the Mariner sees the Red Death as her Moby Dick and wants to go out in a blaze of glory for defeating her greatest challenge and preserving her legacy. Although, as you'll see in the end, it winds up being the very definition of a proverbial fish story. Bring it on, Island. I can take it. Mainlander, I got one last idea. Crazier than a box of rad roaches, but that hasn't stopped you before. Hull's got plenty of stopping power now. But if a Mire Lurk Queen went for a frontal assault, I'd like to help if I can. I had a feeling I could count on you. Thicker walls can beat the whole mass velocity force issue. But the bigger problem is acid. Only thing I've ever seen survive a queen's acid are other Meyer lurks. The Meyer lurks on our islands have carapaces that are extra tough. So you gather up a bunch of the carapaces and lug them back here. Then I'll reinforce the town as best as I'm able. Where's a good hunting spot for Meyer lurks? Crabs are crawling all over the island along the coast, but you might want to check around Haddock Cove. Meyerler carapaces. Got it. Best of luck to you. Quick factoids I give you there. Haddock is a type of fish from the cod family, usually found in the North Atlantic, which is where Maine is located, the place where Far Harbor takes place. And carapaces are the hard shells or exoskeletons of crustaceans, like crabs and lobsters, or even some reptiles like turtles and such. And since Meyer lurks are based on a cross between crabs and turtles, it makes perfect sense that they'd have carapaces. Pretty easy quest to complete there. Take it one day at a time. My kids ain't gonna believe the stories about you. Cutting carapaces is a dirty job. The pay will be worth it. I got your Meyerler carapaces. Finally, it's done. Everything that can be welded, duct taped, or super glued to the damn docks, all there. It might be time. Soon. For some big decisions. Hell, not used to talking about any of this. The whole island's falling apart. 
so many dead from the fog, the crabs, or whatever. And I just keep wondering how many good weeks I have left. Three, four, two. You should treasure every minute. Leave it all on the table. It's hard. Things that used to bring me joy taste like ash. I remember the way things were. Before the news, I was powerful close to tossing the whole lot off my docks. But afterward, there weren't no point in defending my land. Let them come, I guess. And now watching them all squabble instead of lending a hand? Hell, a single finger to help. Don't they realize that all the bickering for just a little bit more is a waste of breath? Isn't there some way we can make things better? Figured I'd bequeath my land to everyone. I think we've lived alone on this island too long. With some common land, maybe a real community can be formed. Even if they have to be drug into it. When times get tough, a community should come together. I used to think the captain was an idealistic fool. But on this side of the road, after I get the carapaces installed, there's one last thing I want to do. You've been a real friend through this. If you're willing to see it to the end, well, gotta get to work. Awesome, and that just happens to be the harpoon gun that I used for my cool climbing tricks you guys may have seen in my past videos. Bet the Mariner didn't think it would help me get up and over high walls. Mariner. Shouldn't take too long to work the carapaces into the harbor. Shouldn't take too long to work the carapaces into the harbor. Okay, as you can see, the final quest won't start right away. She still needs to work on the dock defenses some more. So, you have two choices from here. Either go on and do some other adventuring and come back and talk to the Mariner later, or wait a whole bunch of days. For the purposes of this video, I skipped ahead, of course, but I can't remember how many days I had to wait. Let's put it this way, it was long enough for me to go microwave some dinner and eat it. <laughs> and finally, she's done with her work and is ready for the great hunt. Hey, you, Mariner. Harbor's safe as it's going to get. You ever get a gnawing in your belly to do something crazy? But reason and sense keep steering you clear? The craziest ideas are usually the best. <laughs> Fortune favors the bold and unbalanced, right? You're the only mainlander I'd ever tell of this. So hear me out. The Red Death may have heard of it. The big monster lives beneath the waves, only strikes when the fog is thick. People think it's some drunken sailor's tale, but no one goes sailing when there's a fog on. In their bones, they know there's something out there. Is there any evidence the Red Death is real? When I was a little one, I went sailing with my aunt. Fog rolled in thick and fast, and we saw it. Glowing red, crimson, an unholy light that stretched to the sky. My aunt was no fool. We rode to shore with all our might. Tide made it hard, but we hit landfall. Yeah, I suppose the Red Death could exist. Good. An open mind. With my business here done, and knowing someone like yourself, I seek to end this unholy terror. Dozens of boats over the long years been claimed by it. I mean to hunt this Red Death. Are you with me? How do we go about this hunt? No one's encountered the Red Death up close and lived. But many folk have seen its glow from afar. I've been collecting the details of those sightings for years. We take our boats, and I can get us there. I know it. But it could be the deadliest challenge we ever face. So I'll understand if you pass. Count me in. Bring whatever weapons of death and mass destruction you got. Meet by the docks. You take your boat, I'll take mine. This trip is going to test our metal more than anything. So the great hunt begins. Oh, and by the way, when she used the term metal spelled that way, it means courage or inner strength. Food, stim packs, fully stocked. Mariner says the fog's alive can hear you, so mind what you say. Okay, let's get to the dock. Guns, guns, and... 
Just in case there happened to be any special dialogue with Avery as the Silver Shroud, I went ahead and switched that costume. Turned out there wasn't, but I didn't know at the time. I need to talk to you. Tectus wasn't specific, but he said that you were an instrument of Adam's will. Because of you, I think we have a real chance of peace here. I guess we'll find out. Once the fog recedes, and given time, it always does, we'll take our island back. And that's thanks to you. Hello. Mariner, please. I heard about this expedition of yours. We need you. Please, turn back. The hull's strong, and one more rifle won't make a difference. Mainlander, if the Red Death's real, we can't afford to lose you both. Do you really think it's dangerous? Every now and again, some fool goes hunting for the Red Death. Sometimes they come back empty-handed, but more times than not, that's the last they're heard of. The hunt for the Red Death has taken its share of drunks, but it's also taken the lives of our mightiest men and women. Please, don't throw your life away. With all I've seen and faced, this Red Death doesn't scare me. Don't say you haven't been warned. Okay, we've been warned. But what I wasn't warned about is a major glitch that can happen in the game at this point. I wanted to leave this footage in there for the express purpose of helping anyone watching who might run into this issue, as I'll show you how to solve it. for your boat. Don't tamper with it. The shoals near where we're headed can easily capsize a boat of your size. I'll catch up to you. Not much further, Mainlander. When Auntie Stacy told others of her brush with the Red Death, they laughed at her. Then, two weeks after, a full fishing boat never came back. From the beach, they saw the glow on the horizon. I've been looking to end the reign of the Red Death's terror my whole life. Wrecks all around it. There. You see it, right? Um, no, I don't see anything. <laughs> Meet you there, and get prepared. And here's the glitch. You come out of the cutscene and you're just in a sea of darkness. At first, I thought this was actually part of the quest. You know, maybe the fog was so thick that it was actually blotting out all the light. Because, you know, I could still move. I could, I could see the nav bar. I could even go into my Pip-Boy. So I thought maybe I could fast travel to Haddock Cove and get out of the blackness from there. But as you arrive there, you're still glitched out. I went ahead and reloaded. Still glitched. So, I went back to the dock and tried to skip the boat ride by going straight to Haddock Cove and then swimming from there. Here's how that turned out. there might have been an Easter egg here, so I checked it out real quick. Not really an Easter egg.
bunch of shipwrecked boats here, so I knew it was in the right place, but no Mariner of the Red Death. I checked all around and realized that the quest can only be advanced by taking the boat ride. So, I guess I had to swim from the middle of the ocean. So now I'll skip back to where I was before and I'll show you how to solve this glitch. Not much further, Mainlander. So what you have to do is swim towards the marker and just keep swimming. Eventually, you'll get close enough to see the meters counting down. I'll fast forward to the swimming here. Once the counter gets down to around 30, it'll update your quest. And when the counter gets down to about 10, you'll officially be out of the water. And at that point, what you want to do is target the Mariner with your bats. Apparently that breaks the glitch and returns your vision to normal. Hallelujah, we're back on, people. And there's the Red Death. Turns out it's a little runt of a Mirelurk with glowing red eyes. <laughs> Too funny. Since I don't like spoiling things for myself, I had no idea what to expect when I first recorded this quest, and they definitely got me. My dialogue in real life was almost exactly what the sole survivor says to the Mariner here. It can't be. That? That's the Red Death? Are you sure this is it? It's got to be the red glowing eyes. I mean, when the fog's thick, that little fella is deadly in his own fashion. The shoals around here are treacherous. A middling captain with a might of curiosity would run aground for certain. And this far from shore, that'll end you. All right, real quick, middling in the context she's using it here means mediocre or second rate. So she's implying a captain that's inexperienced and might in this context means a little bit of something. In this case, a little bit of curiosity. Think we can handle it? <laughs> we could always call in the Marines. Oh, ha ha. What do we say to all the folk back home? I meant this to be my last great adventure. Instead, if we tell the folk back at town, I'll be a laughing stock. Maybe we embellish a little. Or a lot. Make it the stuff of legends. I have little stomach for it. But it's better than the alternative. Let's go. I thought I got this for you to celebrate. I didn't think it would turn out like this. Well, it seems to be worth a lot, but it's not exactly the best reward you can get. But the best reward of all is getting to play with this Red Death. You can see now why this thing made the number one slot in my craziest creatures in Fallout 4 video. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch me pick up the creature and dangle it in front of the Mariner. <laughs> I even get it to dab on camera. It's completely hilarious, so go check out that video if you haven't seen it already. All right, so let's head back to Far Harbor and make this the stuff of legends. They're here. They're back. Did you find it? Did you end the scourge of the seas? Great job, Scott. So, uh, we set sail. It was a terrible fight. So you killed it? Oh, yes, we did at that. It was quite the sight. Did you hear? They did it. The Red Death's no more. Did it take long? My grand figured it would take a mini-nuke direct to the center of the eye to do it in. That would have worked, but we may do. The seas are Still ours right. again. Fully we stopped. can fish in peace. Tell me, are you injured, Mariner? Are you okay? No. We managed to get through unscathed. Oh, thank God. I thought for sure you were sailing to your graves. Here's to the heroes. Yeah, I think she deserved that legacy. The alternative is that she gets mocked and ridiculed by the harbor folk. So that's why I went with this option. You know, for a dying wish, she'll finally get the credit she deserves. Mariner. Seems like the end of the road. Every time we've talked, you've given me a lot to think about. Might be time to come clean. Tell the others about my condition. But after the lies, it makes the decision even harder. So what's your plan? I'm working on it. I mean, at the end of it all, what's worth doing in your final days? What's worth leaving behind? Do what you can to leave a legacy. Something to be remembered by. I like the sound of that. 
No matter what happens, or what goes down, you were a true friend. The leaves sell guns over by the tourist shop. And that ends The Great Hunt and another Saga of the Sea. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you had fun and learned a little something. And if you had previously given up on the quest because you ran into that glitch, now you know how to solve it. More awesome trivia walkthroughs ahead. Be sure to harpoon that like button and share the video with your crew. Oh man, I suddenly got a craving for some fish and chips. That'll be my great hunt for the day. <laughs> All right, see you guys next time on The School Zone. Stay smart.